So in this video, we are going to see a demonstration of Elasticsearch, particularly AWS Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is an open source, restful, distributed search and analytics engine, which is built on top of Apache Lucene. And it is commonly used for log analytics or your full text search or some operational intelligence use cases. So it's basically you can do your text searches, you can upload your data to your Elasticsearch cluster and do searches and similar use cases. And not only that, Elasticsearch is coupled with Kibana, which is a visualization tool. So once your data goes into your Elasticsearch cluster, you can query the data in your Elasticsearch cluster, but you can also visualize your data using Kibana, like you can have graphs and analytics, and it you can provide like near real-time analytics using Kibana and Elasticsearch. So let's see how we can use that. Now let's create a Elasticsearch cluster, and then we will upload some data in our Elasticsearch cluster and then we can visualize the data using Kibana and search the data as well. So I'm inside my AWS management console and I'll look for Elasticsearch. So once I'm here, if you're using the service for the first time in your account, It'll come up with this page and I'm going to click on create a new domain where domain is basically a cluster. And I'm going to give the domain name as ops ES. You can select the Elasticsearch version you want. So I'm going to go with the latest available on the AWS cloud. Click next. So for instance count, ideal in production, you'd want multiple instance count and the more instances you select, it will be more costly. And I would recommend you delete your cluster as soon as you are done or it will cost you a lot. And then you can also select the instance type. We'll just go with the default, but for your production needs, you can select the instance type you want and we'll leave the rest as defaults. So you can also select the storage type so for this also we'll just leave the defaults but you can select the storage type and it will create an instance of this type with the storage type for your cluster and there are advanced options but for now we'll just click next and also it will take automatic snapshots for you you can select the time frame so click next and then you can put it put your cluster inside your VPC so basically imagine it will create an instance and install everything for you within your VPC and the subnet you specify but for us we're going to click on public access and what we are going to do is it's a public access but we won't have everybody access our cluster we're going to restrict the access so we are going to create an IAM policy which will allow just my IP address to have access to this cluster. So I'm going to click on select template and it's saying allow access to the domain from specific IPs. I'm going to click that and over here I'll enter my IP address. So for that I need to find my IP address. So I'm going to just go to show my IP or what's my IP website and get my IP address. So this is my IP address. I'm going to copy that, paste it here, click OK. So over here, it's saying there's an IAM policy which says that this cluster can only be accessed from this IP address, source IP address. I'm going to click Next. So, so everything is in place. So I'm going to click Confirm. And now it will create our cluster. And it does take good bit of time like approximately like it says over here it takes about 10 minutes to, for your cluster to get initialized so let's join after some time so after a while you will see that your domain status is active and here
here is your domain endpoint so we'll grab this endpoint i'll copy it and on my machine i have this file so it's called bulk movies.json and this is the data that we are going to load into our elastic search cluster it has an index uh, called movies and then it has different data about a movie so we are going to load three documents or three rows in our elastic search cluster so what i'm going to do is use this command so we are going to do a curl and we are going to do a post and this is our cluster url slash underscore bulk and this is our movies.json file and the content type is application json so i'm just going to enter hit enter and now it's going to upload the data to our cluster and once it's done we can go back to our cluster we can copy the kibana url and open the kibana url and you can see over here we have the kibana home page and then we can click on discover and for the index pattern name type in movies so it's able to match it and then click on next step and then click on create index pattern so you you can see the fields over here so now go to visualize or go back to discover and then now you have over three rows over here and now we can search our data like i can just search anything like let's just search dennis hit enter so it will find the json where this text matches so that's how you can query your data and you can visualize the data uh, you can perform all kibana operations on it and one important use case of elasticsearch is integration with dynamodb now we know it's difficult to query dynamodb and write complex query so what you could do is stream your dynamodb data into Elasticsearch and then visualize in Kibana or query in Kibana. For instance, we have this three JSON policy, JSON documents. It could very well have been your DynamoDB items. So you can now search over here your DynamoDB items. You can query it over here. So that's how you can stream your DynamoDB data to Elasticsearch and there are lambdas available so you just enable the DynamoDB trigger and we have already seen that how to enable trigger stream the data to lambda and then there are lambdas that would forward the data to the Elasticsearch endpoints so those are predefined lambdas which are already available inside AWS lambda templates so you can use that as well so that's one of the use cases where you could use Elasticsearch with DynamoDB to query DynamoDB data.